Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of Books Up Close. I will be reviewing Tori Peters' novel Detransition Baby, which everyone has been talking about and I finished recently. Thank you for coming to this channel and watching. If you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe and click the bell for notifications and check out the other reviews that I have on this channel. So if you have heard of Detransition Baby, it'll probably be because of the ridiculous furor around the book being on the Women's Prize long list. Sadly, it didn't make the short list. Neither did Raven Leilani's Luster, which I'm very angry about on both counts. But I'm not going to get into that ridiculousness now. Rather, I'm going to tell you about this amazing book that I hope you will read. And if you've already read it, I'm interested to hear what you think. So the novel follows three main characters. Reese, who is a trans woman who wants a baby. Ames, her detransitioned ex-lover, who is Amy when they were together. And Katrina, who is Ames's boss and lover, who at the start of the novel finds out that she is pregnant. Now, this kind of triangle of people are brought together when Katrina basically discusses whether she wants to keep the baby with Ames and Ames suggests that he brings in Reese as a third party to raise the child. So basically the novel kind of thinks through what it might be like for these three people to raise a child in a kind of queer family arrangement. As this happens, Katrina then learns that Ames has detransitioned and what that means for their relationship and for her and all of the characters kind of come into certain kinds of self-knowledge, self-realization and so on. Now the structure of the book is that we are kind of, we flip between the past and present. So the kind of present time narrative as Katrina is more and more pregnant and the sections are kind of timed like eight months after conception. And then they're interspersed with kind of flashbacks to when Reese was together with Amy. And we eventually kind of get up to the point where we learn some of the reasons or at least some of the ideas around why Ames detransitions. De so the book is this incredible look at gender, at sexuality, but more broadly at the idea of motherhood and about the kind of social roles that we take on in relation to parenting. There are really interesting discussions in the book about what motherhood means for cis or trans women in particular, but also the kind of the racialization of those things. So Katrina is Asian American and she and Reese have a really interesting discussion about kind of who has babies and who within the kind of social sphere is seen as being okay to have a child, right? So Reese kind of says like trans women are never allowed to want to have kids, right? They're always asked, why do you want a child? Which is a question that doesn't get asked to cis women. They're not asked, why do you want a child? It's kind of seen as this innate process. But then Katrina comes back and says, well, actually, that's racialized, right? That certain women of color are seen, are looked down upon for having children, right? She kind of invokes the idea of the kind of welfare queen image, right? So that motherhood has never been distributed evenly across women. But Reese still kind of pushes back on that and says, yes, it may not be <clears throat> that every woman should have a child, but they never ask the question of why do you want a child? So the book really thinks through some of the thorny, complex overlaps between kinds of womanhood, right? And kind of the, the ways in which gender is materialized, fleshed out, lived, embodied in the contemporary world, or at least in the contemporary US. The book is incredibly smart, it's very well written, you really kind of fly through it. Peters is a really great writer. There are moments when it's perhaps a bit overwritten, there are some kind of slightly overdone descriptions, and there are times when some of the characters speechify a little bit, or at least via the narrator kind of tell us a lot, right? There's a lot of explanation, but I think it's quite important for a novel that is wrestling with such huge ideas. I didn't mind the fact that characters would kind of lecture us a little bit on a particular topic or idea because actually the things that this book is grappling with are so big and weighty and meaty and haven't been discussed really in mainstream writing. The book really gets away with it and, and allows us into this nuanced conversation that is missed from most of the awful uh, dialogue that's happening in kind of mainstream press and media. And one of the central parts of 
this is detransition, right? Which is at the heart of the book and the title. And in an interview with uh, The New Yorker, Peter said she wanted to take detransitioning away from those people that might use it against trans people, right? Detransition can be seen by anti-trans people as kind of evidence for the dangerousness of trans identity. But instead, Peter says we need to reclaim that story and make sense of it for ourselves. She kind of touches upon this in the book a little bit and we kind of get an insight into why people might detransition, but if you look at any of the research or writing out there, detransition often happens because of external forces, right, that trans people feel pressured from the outside world, whether it's because they can't get a job or because their family and friends kind of step away from them or worse, often way less from kind of within I've made the wrong decision, but rather society has no place for me in this way. And I think touching upon this topic and doing it with both kind of sensitivity and kind of like literary verve, right? Because the characters are so engaging. We follow them and we feel their complexity of emotion. By doing that, Peters really humanizes what in mainstream culture is a very kind of clinical dehumanized storyline about trans and trans identity as something we can just discuss, right? As like, as, as an issue. But rather this book fully fleshes out these complex characters, all three of the main characters are fully realized human beings that you believe, you're interested in, you care about. They come with all of the things that real people come with. And I think that's one of the huge strengths of Peter's book. More than anything else, more than the issues, it gives us real living, breathing characters that we want to invest in. And it's funny and it's engaging and it's ridiculous at times and it will keep you reading, I promise you that. So I'm giving this book four and a half out of five. It loses that half just because of the tiny little bits of overwriting, but honestly, this is a near perfect book and I think everyone should go and buy it immediately. Um, it's fantastic, it's readable, it will open your mind, it will make you rethink things, and really, what more do you want from a book? Please, if you've read the book, comment below, tell me what you think of it, give me your thoughts. Please also like this video, and share it with people, send it around. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And I'll see you soon for the next video. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay well, and keep reading.